Yasu. Yasu. That's what they say in Athens. In Greece. Yasu. Um, good morning to you in whatever language you prefer. I'm happy to be able to read to you today from Hebrews. Pastor Jim Simbola here, you there. And we're reading through the book of Hebrews, trying to learn more about the reason why God inspired an unknown author to write this book to whom? Primarily for Jewish believers who probably because of persecution were tempted to go back to religion as in the old days. The Jewish ritual, Old Testament, Moses, temple, high priest, animal sacrifices. You know, if they would have, they wouldn't have been persecuted in certain parts of the world as much as Christians were. It was the name of Jesus, like today, that brings so much heartache. Anti-Semitism has raised its ugly head again. Obviously, we all see what's happening in recent days. But anti-Christian and persecution of Christian, just look up and check out what's been happening to Christians in Nigeria lately. Whoa. Or in Egypt over the last 10 years, evangelical Christians or here in America among the media elites and Hollywood. They just love hearing about, tell me the story of Jesus. Right on my heart, every word. Oh, they're just, they're just dying to hear a testimony about a changed life through faith in Christ. They're, they're everywhere around, but no, they're not gonna broadcast that. But we're gonna broadcast it. So we're reading in Hebrews 9, I'm gonna read a whole bunch because this is part of the comparison now that the writer is making between the old tabernacle set up, the ritual, and now um, what's happening uh, in the new covenant with Jesus Christ. Chapter 9, verse 10. In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it, because a will is in force only when someone somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who has made it is living. We got that, okay? This is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood, i.e. life being shed, bloodshed, life. When Moses had proclaimed every command of the law to all the people, he took the blood of calves animals, together with water, scarlet wool, and branches of hyssop, and sprinkled the scroll, the law, and all the people. He said, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you to keep. Notice, God's commanded you to keep. That was the heart of the old covenant. You keep what's written in the scroll and to initiate it and install it, this is what went on. Calf, calves died, blood was shed. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle that was built and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So he's rehearsing something, the writer that he's touched on before. He's reviewing with probably these Hebrew uh, um, recipients of this letter. He's reviewing with them the Old Testament ritual. That when the tabernacle was built, when the law was promulgated among the people, and when it went into effect, everything was sprinkled with blood. That was the sign of the covenant being made. And the Old Testament law, the blood that sealed it, was the blood of some animals. Perfect, but they were animals. No, without blemish, without spot, 
You know that, right? That whenever an animal is brought to be sacrificed, not just through the initiation of the covenant, but for a sin offering, you couldn't bring some lame three-legged um, goat or calf. You had to bring a perfect animal. In fact, the priests had one of their duties, part of the Levites, were to examine the sacrifice. It had to be perfect. Why? In the Old Testament, thinking it was, God's not going to accept your leftover wasted animals. To have the blood shed, it had to be innocent, perfect for the sinner bringing the offering to cover it in a sense for a while until the perfect system was revealed through Jesus Christ, the new covenant. So those animals that were shed, uh, the blood was shed, they were killed. They had to be perfect. They were ins inspected. Like the lamb on the Passover night. You couldn't bring one with scurvy or some decrepit uh, uh, hindrance to their getting about, their appearance, uh, stuff coming out of their eyes. Sick. No, no, no. God deserved the best. That was that covenant. What do you think about our priest and our sacrifice? Perfect? Would you compare the blood of Jesus with the blood of some animal? No. Jesus, the Lamb of God, sacrificed for our sins and putting into effect the new covenant. By the way, during one of my first visits to Argentina, I learned something that I saw a cow killed to feed a thousand pastors and workers. That's the beef capital of the world. In fact, someone gave them five cows, if I remember, for this two-week conference. And it was a cow. And I saw it killed, it was shot. They told me that when you kill a pig, you better get that, these are gauchos out in the open, you better get that knife to get them to the right spot or else you have a bleeding, wild, out of control, squealing pig. But friends told me when you kill a lamb, you bring the lamb and you start sawing its neck and killing it, and it just looks at you. No squealing, no fighting. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, Jesus came and offered his life, not kicking and screaming. He could have called 10,000 angels. He gave himself willingly for you and me. That should make us love him a little bit more today. Watch and tell him that as we sign off. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.